really excited, you guys. Today we are speaking to art course creator and instructor Chris Fabre, aka Octopus Connection. She's going to share with us her experience running courses on Skillshare and using other platforms. Also discussed are the pros and cons of perfectionism, where to sell your art, knowing your why, email newsletters, lead magnets, New Year's resolutions, and art gifts for artists. Here we go. My name is Christine Vabre. I go by Chris because I just like everything kind of simple and easy. And I am an artist from the time I could hold a crayon. Like I'm just, just one of those people that always love to be creative. And I've tried everything. Like I did um, all kinds of painting, sculpting, fiber arts of all kinds, crochet. Uh, I love fiber arts. But, you know, my the heart of, I, I finally, you know, spent some time really drilling down and realized my true love is watercolor. And so that's what I'm really focusing on. And it's made me really, really happy. So I teach watercolor. Um, I paint watercolor. And um, I've been teaching actually since 2016 on Skillshare. And I'm starting to put out my own classes now. In fact, I have a mini course that's coming out on the uh, middle of the month. When you say a mini course, do you do that via your own website or do you exclusively use Skillshare? I have been exclusively exclusively using Skillshare, but um, I've been dabbling with my own teaching platform for the last year and a half, year, year and a half ish. And I'm finally, I, I actually opened up a membership recently a watercolor membership so people could go in and like uh, I think a lot of people there's so many classes out there that they kind of just jump in wherever and then they have they feel like they're missing stuff you know because they never had that art school experience or they never had that start to finish training and so that's what the membership is all about and I'm still developing it but it's coming along really nicely I'm really proud of it and I think that a lot of people I've, I've had the, the the ladies I've had coming through there um are feeling like that's really giving them some confidence and some backup and some, some kind of a foundation that they didn't have before. So I have that going. And then uh, the mini course is going to be the first real, uh, uh, it's kind of like, it's going to be about a, a two and a half to three hour intensive on how to build collections, but I'm teaching it with watercolors. So it's basically for any type of creative. I really learned how to create collections in surface pattern and in, in, in immersion. And when I learned surface pattern design, but I can, I, it applies to everything. And so I, I'm really excited about that too. Technically speaking, when you're doing your classes in that course you're talking about, I'm assuming they're online or are they in person? If they're online, do you use Kajabi, Zoom, Skype? <laughs> that is such a good question. Um, <laughs> It's been a journey. So uh, in 2020, I took immersion. I got so inspired. And I did a live workshop with Bonnie um, called The Art of Class Creation, because at that point, all the other kinds of creative workshops were taken. And so she and her team were like, well, what else do you know? And I'm like, well, I know how to create a, a class and a course. So I taught that and I got really inspired that I could do more of this on my own platform. So I started teaching live uh, painting sessions and I've been doing them since 2021. They're a blast. I love having a bunch of people in the Zoom space, just live. I, I lead a project and most of the time they have no idea if they can keep up with me. And at the end, they've done gorgeous work. So it's just a, so much fun. Uh, so that got me used to the live space, but uh, I also do video instruction in uh, the membership and in the upcoming mini course. It's actually going to be a combination. I'm going to be including a live consultation and then there'll be video training throughout the mini course as well. And so I do just want to circle back to Skillshare because people ask me all the time, if they should go into Skillshare, it's not something I've tried. And I'm just wondering how you found that experience. I don't know what kind of money you can, I don't know the ups and downs, the pros and cons. So if you could speak a little bit about your experience with Skillshare. Absolutely. I get asked that a lot. And the funny thing is since 2016, the platform has changed so much that it would have been a different answer back then or in between or even a year ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, um, and you asked me about the platform too. So I will answer that for you too, as well. So regarding Skillshare, what I loved about it is that I didn't even know I was going to be teaching. I got this opportunity. It said, if you know, teach what you know. And at the time I had the jewelry business. So I created a couple of jewelry crafting classes that are still doing well, but um, it allowed me to share what I know. I didn't really consider myself a teacher back then, but as I got into the process, which admittedly was overwhelming in the beginning, I started falling in love with it. Like I started thinking this is a, like a whole nother canvas for me. This is another way for me to invite artists in to what I'm doing and share my process with them. And I thought that was just mind blowing, you know, the thought that I could do this in this day and age and with all this technology and I'm, and that they create a platform for me to put my videos on and to share. They have a little text section. There's a discussion section. There's a project gallery section and that I could really uh, help. And I've actually had artists become Skillshare teachers themselves or start their own businesses and so forth and, and attribute them to my classes there on Skillshare. And that feels amazing. Um, and regarding my platform, so Skillshare is is fantastic they have a really good training if you want to learn how to teach um so they take you through a process and there's really a lot to learn but there you know if you just stick with it and just keep creating you just like everything else you get good at it you know you just get better and better i'm still improving <laughs> after all this time i still have so much to learn but the thing is with them that they have a certain guidelines that you follow, which has actually made me a much better teacher. But it's really fun to have my own platform that I can just sort of do my own thing on as well and have the balance of both. It's quite different. Um, I am using a platform called Searchy. I started with MemberSpace, which was a, a plugin for my Squarespace website. But that became, it just, it's very, it, it just felt a little clunky for what I wanted. So I went to Kajabi um, and Kajabi's gorgeous and beautiful. And it it's probably the one of the best platforms out there. I know Kartra is very similar, but Kajabi is, is amazing. And they have a lot of features, but honestly, it just got really expensive. And um, <laughs> cause it is the priciest out there. I mean, it's a Rolls Royce. It's the Rolls Royce of, of teaching platforms. Um, but I also felt it was a little cold and impersonal for my style. So I decided to move on over to Searchy. Now I took um, the membership experience with Stu McLaren and it was just such an amazing course. And he is a tech and um, startup guy, if you will. He has been for decades. He started a platform called Searchy for course creators and membership owners and being the genius that he is, Searchy has this function where it searches what you say, it pulls the words from your video and creates transcriptions and it's separate audio files. So you can listen to everything as a podcast. You can read everything as a transcription and you can search everything through what's said in the video. So now you can find what you're looking for. You know, it's so easy to find stuff because you just find, you just say what you write what down what you want to search for and it just pulls it from the video so it's 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 been a really great platform i find it really great when i have already taken a course and i need to go back and remember how to do something very technical you know i love to just do the course the first time but oftentimes i need to go back five or six times before i completely remember how to do something absolutely or, you know, I've put that aside for a while, whatever tool that is. And then I think of it in a year and I don't want to go rewatch all the videos. I, I just want to search for it and yeah. <laughs> remember how to do it again. Yeah. I think this is the future of learning, you know, and, and, um, Stu of course is right in the front end. <laughs> He's just a brilliant man and, and, uh, very empathetic and I love his team. So I, I have really enjoyed The cool thing is I can, uh, there's a lot of customization features within Searchy of how you want it to look. And so I've customized it to look a lot like the Kajabi site did. And yet I have all these extra features too. And it's literally probably a quarter of the price. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of these tech platforms that are promoted are, are really great. You know, everyone's going to promote the best of the best, right? I'm going to say hi, <laughs> you know, everyone wants to promote the best of the best, but realistically, when you're starting out, you can't really necessarily afford the best of the best 
of every platform for every creative thing you're doing. I mean, it's just not realistic. It's not, I was just going to say that. <laughs> it's just not realistic. It's not. And, you know, I think in the growing stages, it's a little overwhelming too. I think it actually prevents people from taking creative risks because sometimes you think, okay, either I have to go all in with the premium, <laughs> with the premium, you know, buy the $500 camera and the $600 a month in subscriptions. And pretty soon, you know, I can't afford to do any of this. So why bother doing it? And I'm a fan of just, you know, work with what you have. I am too, Aurora. And I, I love that you said that um, because the simpler I've kept it, the more successful I've been, because honestly, I don't have to deal with all the fluff. I still film all my courses and classes with my iPhone to this day. And I keep my lighting set up super simple. Um, I have a very super simple microphone. I mean, I just, I've just kept it quality, but simple. And it's really worked for me. That's great to hear because it seems like you've been pretty successful with it. You know, I've also been filming with just, you know, my camera or, I mean, my phone camera or zoom, but so far, you know, I'm just beginning. So it's nice to know that you can go far without, you know, upgrading your tech to the most expensive thing all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually I would like to put out a course. I know there's a lot of courses on teaching creatives, how to teach, but at some point I'd like to put out my own because I feel like I have a lot to share in that space as far as how creatives can do it in particular. I don't think there's a lot there specifically for creatives. And, you know, we are a different think kind of thinker. We're a different kind of operator and we get each other. And I think I can really help with that because I think, you know, we want to bring our best. We want that perfection. And, and, you know, it doesn't, it, it, although we want that, it just doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually a proud non-perfectionist and I know that's not very popular to admit. I hope no one I ever have a job interview with. <laughs> But I just think, you know, being a perfectionist is overrated. I have been able to do a lot of things in my life. And sometimes it's been doing it just the rough and ready way. I totally agree. I think I really held myself back for a long time because sadly, my perfectionism took over more times than I could count. And uh, it's really having to push through that all the time and say, look, I'm just going to do this. I'm, it's low, you know, and having to talk myself down off the ledge, you know, it's low risk. I can do this, you know? <laughs> and I certainly do think perfectionism has its place. My struggle is to sort of work on editing, curating and refining because I don't have that perfectionist gene. So what inspires your painting? I live in the desert and I'm hugely inspired by the landscapes out here. And we have a beautiful state park, like 20 minutes from, from where I live. And I love to go out there and paint and draw and capture yeah. photography and take photo shoots so forth. And I want to do a whole collection around the desert. I'd love to sell them as prints originally. Um, I plan to open a printful shop. I have a society six shop now, but honestly, Aurora, it's just not my style. It's just a little, I've just have too much distance from the customer. I don't get that interaction. I never, I mean, I, rare, I, I, I don't even promote it at this point because I feel so disconnected to it. And I think the printful route where I will be able to keep everything on my website and, and keep the emails that, that, uh, from purchasers and reach out to them with my story and, and be able to make that connection with them, I think will be so much more meaningful for me. And I hope to do that by January. Yeah, well, I think with everyone with Society6, the hope is to kind of go viral or something. But if not, you know, it's kind of like a couple dollars here, you know, a good month might be, yay, I made $20 and you think that's a lot. But if you own the the traffic, you know, more likely than not, you're going to be making that per sale instead of per month. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it, it's just, again, not only do you make so little, but it's really a buzzkill how um, just, I just don't like that distance from the customer. I'm an up close and personal girl. I was in retail for uh, gosh, 15 to 17 years and uh, as a manager and a buyer and a trainer and, and as a salesperson. And I love that personal one-on-one -on -one interaction. I love to understand what the clients wants and feels. And that's why I'm doing it, you know, is for that interaction. And so when I don't get it, it's like, well, my why is not, doesn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> I 
was going to say, it's all about knowing your why, right? Because I think we can get really distracted. And, you know, I personally, you know, I have a day job. It's another business I run. So it's not just some day job. I, you know, some people have a day job and it's like a grind, but I, you know, but I do love, I love my quote unquote day job because it's, you know, a passion of mine, but I definitely make a lot more money from that. And I think I get really distracted, you know, with how I can make the $5 and $10 here and there off of some of these platforms and not remembering my why, you know, why am I doing the art to begin with? It's not to make five or $10. And in fact, I, at that time, placing a million things up on society six or placing right. 600 patterns on Redbubble for that $5 could be better used either making art or maybe working on my other business. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and it, our time is so precious. Our energy is so precious. I really have been drilling down this last couple of years to see what really matters to me. So I've held off on really growing my shop until I really have a strategy and a plan and a product line I really can speak to in a way that will impassion people, inspire people. My main focus is to inspire and to draw out the belief that, yeah, you can be an artist. You can do that. You can do that. You know, you are good enough. Yes, you are. And so that's my teaching style. And that's what I, how I want to sell too. So my sales have not been for foremost and forefront, even though I do have a, a, a handmade uh, shop with some paintings and some hand-painted bookmarks and some of my jewelry and so forth. It's, it's just a little sampling of what I hope to do soon. Speaking of this marketing and promotion thing, do you have an email newsletter? I do. And what, what platform do you use? How do you find the experience? How do you get your subscribers? Okay. That's a great question. It's been a journey. (laughs) All of this has been a journey. Um, You know, I have gone from MailChimp to, and then I, I moved over to Squarespace when they started their email service because I, my website is on Squarespace. Squarespace, I love. It is beautiful. I think it's great because it really highlights images and has this beautiful parallax scrolling where one part stays, you know, static and the picture moves behind it. It's just got some beautiful effects behind it. And they really understand beauty and uh, how to allow it within these websites. And when they started their Squarespace, email service, I was able to pull that into the server, like they connected it all. You connected the branding and all of that. So it made it easy for me. But after a couple of years, it got a little limiting because I didn't have the ability to do a nurturing sequence, which is the automatic, um, if it's for the viewers that don't know what that is, it's the automatic um, emails that you get when you start following someone, you get one every couple of days. So you learn about who they are. And there were, I was limited to four emails a week for the the middle plan, which I was, which I had. And I, I found that if I, I needed to send out, oops, I bloopered, you know, here's a new link. Then I used up an email that I didn't have to give, you know? (laughs) So at, after two years, I I grew out of it and I went over to Flowdesk. I I feel like, love. yeah, I was going to say, I've (laughs) I've been looking at Flowdesk, but you know, I only have like I only have like 30 subscribers anyway, but the thing is I only have those subscribers because I haven't, you know, launched any kind of lead magnet or anything. I mean, right now I'm with MailChimp, but they don't allow you to do that for free anymore. Isn't I think they something? did. And I think without any kind of lead magnet mechanism, like how are you even, I mean, I can't even get started with it. I feel like that so is I'm thinking question. about Flowdesk, but I don't know if it's again, a monthly subscription, if it's worth it, if I'm starting almost from scratch. Got it. You know, you really want to feel ready for that. You know, I, I, my emails is still relatively small. I, I started quickly and gained about 25 to 30 uh, subscribers within, you know, three to six months. And then um, I had that for a long time. And then I did the, started doing the live painting sessions and my, my list kind of blew up. So I used that as a lead magnet in 20, 21. I started in January of 2021. And um, I got about almost 100 subscribers just from that because I, and, and it taught me something about what people want. So I make sure I had a live painting session element in the membership because I know people want that. So again, it was a, a breadcrumb I learned along the way. Then I started uh, 
dabbling and, and I hooked up with a company called, what was, it's a charity, but you donate it to the platform. They raise money for a, um, starving people in Thailand where the man lives and with his family over there. And you get the, he sells all of these cor- hundreds of courses that people donate for $99. And you have kind of lifetime access to it. So people donate this $99. They get all these free courses. You get exposure. And I grew my list by another hundred with that. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was pretty impressive uh, how he put that all together and benefited everybody. Now I am offering free watercolor lessons because I realized, and again, the, the lead magnet thing is just, I, I just stumbled onto these things by accident. I struggled for long periods of time in between. And now I realize that I, I really want to grow my watercolor education business. I need to offer the things that will attract those people. So now I have a free color palette mixing lesson as a lead magnet that I've just gotten another 35 people in the last couple of months, which is really great for me. And I'm going to be adding another one soon because I see people like it. So again, it's all trial and error. That's great. So is it just then? a pre-recorded lesson that they get a link to once they subscribe. Exactly. I just have it on my website and they fill out the form. <clears throat> and then I have a nurture sequence attached to that through Flowdesk that they get, and then they get put onto my email list to get the regular messages after that. Oh my gosh. That's fantastic. I was talking in my last interview about the fact that, you know, I need to work on, I need to work on the magnet, but I also need, I also need to figure out who my target audience is for that newsletter. You know, there's no point in getting a bunch of artists if I want to target, you know, collectors, but there's also not a point in targeting collectors if I want it to use it for more, you know, educational purposes. Exactly. That is such a great observation. And that's why it took me, it's taking me, I probably had an email list technically for the last five years, but I've been all over the map. I started with the jewelry. And then I went into kind of just inviting everybody. And then now I'm going back to like really drilling down on the watercolor education. And so, you know, uh, not everybody on my list is going to be part of that, but the new people will. And that's what I'm just looking forward and realizing it's all part of the process. And the lead magnet thing took me forever. And I really, really had to, again, find out what I wanted to provide people. You know, that was the crux of it. And that's really it. Once you know that, then you can find your target audience because they'll just start finding you. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's not maybe all of these techniques and technologies. It's actually figuring out the basics. Like what are your goals? Who do you want? And then, you know, finding the technology and techniques that work with that versus, you know, I take all these courses on Skillshare. I love taking courses (laughs) on the the techniques, you know, but then you realize, well, if, if you don't have the why, if you don't have the kind of, you know, reason, the pinpoint, it's not going to help you. That is such a great thing to discover. I think for me, it took me forever to just to learn that, you know, and, and also to trust my own instincts that I can hear a million trainings and, you know, I join free challenges and I take courses and I watch tons of Skillshare classes at the end of the day, what works for me. And I really encourage my students to really connect with that. And you're going to know, you're going to know if something's annoying to you, if something's just not fitting, if something you, it's not for you, it's just, I don't think life is, is that complicated at the end of the day. Agreed. So in, <laughs> in terms of marketing the courses that you're teaching now, do you, what is your, do you have better luck with your email listserv in terms of getting people to sign up for the course or do you use Instagram or what do you find the best way to get people to sign up for your courses? Is? Well, over time, I've developed a strategy of of building students on Skillshare, it's been a slow process, but it's been steady. And and it, what I've done is I have course created classes that they want to even, you know, take. And so I listen, I pull them, I ask them questions. Okay, what do you want to see? What do you want to learn? And take that as a starting point. And then I ask when they create a project, I um, I actually learn to run uh, giveaways in my, my classes. And, um, I know a lot of Instagram giveaways aren't that great because you get people to join the giveaway and then they just unfollow you afterwards. But on Skillshare works a little differently because I'm, I make sure to always 
do like a watercolor set giveaway or a, right now I'm running a giveaway for a one year of Skillshare. That's worth 165 US dollars. So it's a pretty nice prize. And you and I know how valuable Skillshare learning is. You know, it's it's been invaluable to me. <laughs> um, but I run a giveaway. I get people excited. And then to I make conditions. You need to post a project, need to watch the whole class uh, and then leave me a review. So that really helps me grow. And so they get to enter the giveaway. I get, you know, the basics from what I need from my students. And then I add some little extras. You can add a discussion or an Instagram post if you want an extra entry or two. So um, I also, when they turn in that project, I reach out to them and say, hey, can I, may, may I share your project on my Instagram? Would it be okay? And I, I start a developing a relationship with them on the, the Instagram platform. And then I DM them every time I have a new class. So, and I start a relationship with them and it's not just about come watch my classes. I really genuinely am interested in them and their art that they're creating and build a relationship with them. And I have, feel like I have so many new friends. Like I, <laughs> I have honestly had a blast with this Aurora. It's just been so much fun. Every time I get a new a new follower on Skillshare. It's like a, just a new friend in my circle that I get to share with and see what beauty they make. And, and it's just been so, so satisfying. I love that. It sounds like even if maybe you don't make a lot of money off of Skillshare, and I don't know if you do, I'm just saying the you in general, <laughs> that, that it's actually worth it as sort of a marketing platform more than a platform to make money off of that, especially now with Instagram and Facebook having some issues with reach. I feel like, you know, Skillshare seems to be a way that you can get interested people. At least on Skillshare, people have spent money to sign up for the platform. So I think it, they feel a little more invested, a little more invested in it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're so right. And it has been a great way for me to get exposure and for me to um, connect on a whole different way. And also, it's made me more credible. It's given me some credibility I just didn't have before. And that's worth a lot. I mean, social proof is very important as you go forward. And the more you build that, the more, you know, you know, you and I are building social proof right now by just sitting down and chatting together. And, um, you know, I'll share this on my YouTube channel. I'll share it on my Instagram. I'll share it. I have a Pinterest, uh, that I love, uh, <laughs> and, um, I have a Twitter too. It's kind of running in the background, but I don't focus on it a lot. I post about once a week and engage a little bit. I have some friends I love there too, but it's not as artsy or beautiful as I find Pinterest and Instagram. So um, I spend most of my time there. I'm just now coming back to my YouTube channel because I'm finding that we, we've learned that 40% of the traffic that goes to Skillshare comes from YouTube. And so it's a good place to put the time in. It's just a great platform on every level. It's growing like crazy. And, and it, video is just becoming more and more engaging all the time. So I'm very excited to add some of my videos here on a weekly basis now. So Well, and I love that YouTube has the long form option, you know, because you could do short form as well, but I am a little bit more of a long form type person. That's awesome. Everybody, I'm, I'm a little more short form, but I... I love to watch the long form too. So I think every, like everybody has to learn their vibe and do that. And I'm wondering, actually, I'm super curious about Pinterest because I sort of played around with, but I don't really understand how to completely use Pinterest as a social media platform. Pinterest I've been with for probably almost seven years. I love the images on there. I'm so image driven and so visually driven that I think it's tough. Like if it depends on, like different artists have had different experiences on Pinterest and it's all about what you're searching all the time because that's what they give you more of. So I make sure that I spend time searching things I really want to see. And then this, this beauty comes up on my feed and I, so I can get, I can get stuck on that thing for a while <laughs> posting. I love the illustrated um, quotes. I love watching what artists are doing on there and so forth. And when I post, which I do several times a week, I know that post is going to be around forever. I have a couple of posts that are doing quite well that I posted three years ago, you know, and they're doing the best, you know, because they have so much more runway than the, than the new stuff. Um, so 
it it's it's one of those things that I can put links on every every pin, not the idea pins, but the regular pins, which is great because I can link back to my website, I can link back to my courses, I can link back to my Skillshare, I can link back to my Instagram. I can, gosh, link to anything I'm doing. And so it feels very um, productive and people go there primarily to shop and to plan. So it's a lot of people spending money on Pinterest and there's a lot of opportunity, you know, just a lot of opportunity there. So. I've definitely heard it. And I mean, I use Pinterest to get inspiration from everything, you know, apartment decor to, you know, what, what motifs are trending. I tried a couple posts. I don't think I quite understood like how you make a feed and do people go to your personal feed or do they go to your boards that you create or how do they find you? I think it's a combination and I do have links to my Pinterest wherever I am online and uh, including Skillshare. And so I, I see people on my Skillshare class and then I see them popping in as a follower on Pinterest or, you know, vice uh, something or some other platform, but it's all interconnected. And the more interconnected it is, the more Google will say, okay, this person is serious. They're all, they're doing the same thing on all these platforms. They're all linking together and it kind of boosts, boosts you up a little bit. I'm not a Google ranker by any means, but it, it helps all these cross cross links. They're called cross links. I think uh, they really make a difference. I'm still learning the SEO game, but <laughs> I, that I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna focus on that this next year. What are your new year's resolutions? Oh, that's a good question. Well, you know, <laughs> um, there's a lot of things I want to improve on, but I really want to focus on rest and abundance because, you know, the self-talk can be derogatory. It can be in the wrong direction. Oh, you'll never get this. You'll never be that. You'll never do this. And I'm really trying to turn that around and really retrain my brain to, I'm not doing it now, but I will or can do it in the future if I want to, you know, and I'm trying to reframe all the internal monologue to be positive as much as possible. And in doing that this last year, I, I feel different. Like I feel more possibilities out in front of me. I feel like so much more is available for me. And I feel like my business is going to, it's already starting to do better uh, financially. And I just want to keep that going for this next year, but in a much deeper way, I have a big course I want to create, um, start to finish watercolors for beginners. And so in addition to the mini course and another class I'm going to be adding, I want this bigger course as part of my teaching suite where people can come in and really just learn everything they need to know, you know, and, and uh, not have to worry about the missing pieces. What are the best gifts for the artist in your life? <laughs> okay. So keep in mind, I am an affiliate for this, but that's not why I'm sharing it. I truly swear by these. Okay. I'm going to show you. Um, I love to give these as gifts. They are, um, it's, have you ever heard of Viviva Colors? Okay, so it's, if you, if, for those who haven't, it's a hand, it's a handmade watercolor and art, art supply brand out of India. They're all handmade by a family owned company. They're hundred percent sustainable. And the colors are more vivid than any paints that I've ever used in my life. And they last, this little tiny thing lasts as long as a half pan set of 16 colors, okay? So when um, these are little sheets um, that you wet with your brush and then paint with, there's a little fly out palette that literally is right in your hand. So everything is in the palm of your hand. You flip through, all the colors are here. You just flip to a color. And I can literally do this with one hand now because I've been using these a while. Um, there are so many cool, uh, this is the original set. So all my basic colors are here. And then, uh, this is the autumn set. So I have the, the original colors, the autumn set, and then I have the metallics. I have 10 metallic colors that are stunning. I, if you look at my Instagram, I'm painting with them right now for, um, the Jahan's 12 days art holiday art challenge. She's an art agent. She's just delightful. And her artists are so wonderful. And it's lovely to connect with them in the challenge. 
and I'm using all my Viva paint colors, including these metallics to kind of make these magical holiday effects. And, uh, but anyway, my favorite gifts are these because people can throw them in their handbag. They can take them on a trip. I just had um, a student of mine purchase this metallic set last night that she's going on a trip and she can't wait to use this. She has the original set already. So you can put these colors on top of anything else. Anyway, I love this. I teach all my Skillshare classes with them now because they're just such a great way to paint. They look and amazing. I, I, did a, I did an episode on how to be a traveling artist. You know, and one of the hardest things is bringing your paints with you. Those That's things it. are super cool. I did a Skillshare class on this called watercolors on the go or watercolor painting on the go. And, uh, I went outside. I took, I literally filmed myself outdoors with this, using it to show how easy it is to just take it with you everywhere. So where can we find you? Where can we find you online, your art, your courses? I am at octopusconnection.com and octopus meaning I had so many interests. The arms were all over the place. So <laughs> it helps people remember it a little better when they know the context octopusconnection.com is my website. Um, and I linked everything from there, but I also am octopus connection on Instagram. I'm octopus connection on Pinterest and on YouTube as well. So at octopus connection, if you found this artist interview inspiring, please jump over here for another dose of inspiration. Also, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Finally, consider hitting the bell for notifications. On this channel, I share my journey as an artist. What's worked for me, what hasn't, including the often taboo subject of making money from your art. Now, until next time, keep creating.